Hi everybody, welcome back to once more Japanese aircraft painting. In this video you will follow up the whole process of painting the 7 second scale A6M3 model 32 Zero Fighter, allied name Hemp, from Tamiya. Well, this kit was started long time ago, while I was thinking about making this channel, so I won't show you a review nor assembling process, only a few photos I took in some milestones of this project so far. Not because I'm lazy, but I really didn't record any of the steps, until now. So as you imagine, this kit is pretty much ready for painting, and I thought it was a good time to clean its dust and try again the pre-wash method that I showed in the last video. As quick remarks of the assembly, I used Yahoo instrument panel, already painted, and the PE set from Brangan, which comes in metal finish, so it was a bit struggle to match the colors. The interior color may vary a little between the factory, being it Mitsubishi, more green olive, or Nakajima, gray green. The one I'm trying to make is the Mitsubishi build. The interior is in its final look. I didn't use all interior PE parts, only the more prominent instruments and boxes, and the kit's interior is already quite in detail. I also added some wires on the cockpit floor and walls. The interior color were painted with mix of Tami acrylics. The details like handles, gauge and levers were painted with Vallejo. Later a quick pin wash with black green and some highlights with dry brush Dactan. The Sakai 21 engine that comes with the kit, despite being well injected, shows only the cylinders and the crankcase in three plastic pieces, so I added few lines using 0.2mm lead wires. It was painted aluminum with a later heavy black and CP wash. Here is the final result for this engine. I used the Aero Detail No. 7 Mitsubishi A6M Zero Fighter as reference to build this kit, and specially used it for its blueprints and rivet disposition. The procedure was pretty much a straightforward one, first drawing the lines with a pencil and some tapes for straight lines, then using them to guide the riveter tool. Lead wires were also added to the main gear legs, and a small modification was made by drilling some holes in the scissors, carving the plastic to make it closer to the real ones. Ok, moving to the painting. This is the second attempt to use pre-wash method, just like the kid for Hayati video. All started with a first and light coat of Tamiya white primer. I focused its application on the areas where I made some sanding and messy work, to see if everything will be smooth. Then I masked some panels and painted them with shades of colors to be used in the mix of the base color camouflage. This means except for Nakaki and some grays. I can say that this part is one of that demands the most effort at least for this one camouflage schemes. I don't know yet how it would turn for more colored camouflage. Later, I applied a coat of automotive clear varnish to seal these first effects. Just be careful in this step to not flood the panel lines and rivets, killing its textures, because we need them for the next step. When the varnish is completely cured, it is wash time. I used the usual mix of black and sepia oils, more black than sepia. There is not a real necessity to make it a pin wash, because the concern here is to make lines and rivets darker than the surrounding panels. Of course, a pin wash will make the contour stronger compared to, let's say, a whole wash. But that depends on each modeler will and the patience. This method allows you to check if all lines have continuity avoiding some further problems, like remaking some panel lines. Here, as you can see, the leading edge panel lines needed to be remade. Not a big deal at this stage, but after the whole painting is done, it would be much harder to do. To add further color variation, I waited the wash to dry and then did some speckling with oils, blending this oil paint spots with a moisture brush to don't end up with a contrast too strong. The base color was applied very diluted, in a way I could control color coverage and still keep some of the previous effects visible. Each panel was painted individually, so I can keep the panel lines more visible. The base color I got from a reference guide for A6M color published by Nick Millman, so it's basically 100 parts XF12, 40 parts XF49 khaki, 3 parts medium grey, 3 parts white and 2 parts red. 
I decided to go with this mix, even though it is quite a dark color for 7 second scale, as I'm figuring out the best color shades to use in this method. On the last time I used a lighter shade on the KD4 painting video, and in the end it got lighter than I was expecting. Anyway, in the end this time the color got too intense, even though I used it very diluted. So to make this lighter, I mix roughly 3 to 1 parts of XF12 and XF49 for supplying inside the panels, very concentrated. This pops up all the rivets and panel lines, but gives a weird look to the model, in my opinion. Later, the same color was applied in an overall manner, to reduce the contrast to a less, let's say, cartoonish look. The problem here is that the previous effects are barely visible. If you see closer you can see the rivets, and far away you have a glimpse of the different panel colors. But it got too much covered by the camouflage color. Hmm. Anyway, living and learning. Moving on. The control surface were painted with a mix of XF12 and XF80, giving a light grey appearance for these canvas structures. The cowling was painted with XF85 rubber black, with a drop of navy blue, to give the blue tint visible for the A6M3 cowling. The color is quite dark, which killed most of the pre-wash effect, so I'll have to deal with this later. The Hinomarus were masked and painted first with a yellow base and then XF red mixed with a drop of olive green. This time I decided to try painting the markings over the base color, which may not be the best idea, as most of the pre-wash effect was already attenuated by the lower color layers, and painting markings over just made the previous effects less visible. The same was done with another markings on the tail fin, wings and fuselage. In these areas, there are provided decals, which has these markings and the numbers and kanji together and so on. Well, the Tamiya decals are not the best out there, so I decided to paint the marks and use only the numbers and kanji as decals, for obvious reasons. Before applying the decals, I gave a good coat of clear automotive varnish to get a smooth and shiny surface. Then I cut the numbers and writings and applied them in position using Mr. Mark softener on them, which proved to be great, as the decal film was basically invisible afterwards. Of course, even though Mr. Mark softener being a strong decal softener, I still had to cut the number on the vertical stabilizer to have a better decal adherence and conform it to the stabilizer shape. In the end, they got pretty good, just with a bit of clear film can be seen depending on the light incidence. However, it was easily fixed with another coat of automotive varnish just over the decals, followed by some sanding. A satin varnish was used on the model to check for the decals films after the sanding process and also to have a better surface to oil to grip on. Ok, time for some wash again. I used pin wash of sepia and black on the internal parts of the wheel wells and its covers. As these parts were painted in the same camouflage color, a further wash increased the fake shadows and dirt, giving it a bit different look than the outside. Other areas where I used pin wash were the cowling, because it's quite dark and the pre-wash wasn't strong enough, and also over the Hinomarus, in which were used a dark red wash. As this time I painted them over the camouflage color, differently from the key 84 video, the pre-wash effect was already too attenuated, so I thought it was a good idea to reinforce the panel lines in these spots. The cowling images were painted with Vallejo acrylic neutral grey, then a heavy coat of black oils over it, wiping the excess out with a brush and later with a napkin. The final step is rubbing some graphite on the edges, adding a metal appearance to the guns. On the tail wheel, I painted the canvas made of epoxy putty with Vallejo acrylics 
and then a heavy wash with dark brown. The engine exhaust was painted just like the MG's, but this time I added streaking grime from AK instead of the graphite, to give the exhaust some rust look and worn effect. Well, more oil paint effects, starting from the wheels. They were painted with rubber black and aluminum on the wheels hub. I left the oil paints on the cardboard to soak most of the oil, leaving the pigment, which will dry faster and are easier to use. The first step was to add some spots of earth and sand paints around the rubber, rubbing it with a brush to blend the effect. The process repeated as much times as needed until I got the effect I was looking for. Remember that this plane is a land-based aircraft, so some dust should be visible around the landing gears. The same was done on the wheel wells covers and some just behind the wheels, on the under surface, close to the flaps, where some dust from the rolling wheels may be thrown against the aircraft. In the same manner, a dark sepia mix with a dark base color was applied on the joint of the control surface with the wings and the tail. Remember that I didn't use washes on the Ameiro color, only the pre-wash effect. So to increase the depth impression at these points, I add these fake shadows blending the effect with a brush and then with a napkin. With the residue of pigments on the brush, I gave some strokes around the areas where there are some different panels, aka the gun's covers on the wings, to increase the shadow effects and give some color variation. Also on the control surface, I painted the ribs with white oils, then with a clean brush blended the colors to give some highlights on these structures. The same white color was used on the cowling, but this time to give a sunburnt effect to the black color. The same was done on the upper side of the wings and the fuselage. Despite the tons of work, I like this method because you have a lot of control over the effects, and you can sit back and take a better look later to eventually make some corrections. Some fuel and oil stains were added around the fuel caps and engine area. They were also made with oils and animal paints. This time, to make the stains as thin as possible, I painted them and with a spirits moisture brush, I cleaned the sides until I get a thinner trace. Of course, at this stage, I remembered to add some chipping, which should be made as a previous step. Anyway, at least the Ameiro color doesn't provide much contrast to the aluminum, so the mistaken step shift won't be a real problem. I started with some spots of Vallejo Dactin here and there, mainly on the corner of movable panels. Later, with Vallejo Aluminum, I filled some of the bigger chips, but I didn't bother to make tons of them, because I want to make a reasonable new aircraft. Some chipping on the cowling were also added, as an effect of dust and sand from the airfield being thrown on the fuselage by the rotating propeller. A new coat of satin varnish was applied and the canopy masks were removed. This is always a nervy moment for me. You need to be careful to don't scratch the clear parts and also to don't rip off the paint on the frames. After catching the breath again and adding some of the last details, the kit was done. Here is the final review and some glamour shots. Now some comments on the build and the painting. The build, as I said earlier, was done before I started this channel, so unfortunately I had just a few pictures of the process. But what I can say about the 7 second scale Tamiya A6M3 Model 32 is that it was one of the best and fun to build kits that I have ever put into my bench. And I'm not saying this as an advertisement, because I wouldn't have any benefits on that. I'm saying it because it worth this title. The fitting and the engineering were amazing, just a few things to sand and adjust. The complete score system I left on the description. Now, regarding the painting process, this is the second time I tried the pre-wash method. Despite the results, which I liked a lot, there's a few topics that I would like to comment. First, the colors to be used on the pre-wash. I used black for the panel lines and rivets, which I guess it's fine so far. However, I misjudged the use of the same colors for the speckling process. 
I probably should use a dark Amero color in this step for this kit because the contrast between panel line and rivets with the fuselage mottling was a bit painful to reduce and I ended up almost killing the effect while adding the camouflage colors. Second, I left this time to paint the stripes and markings later over the camouflage color, which also almost killed the previous effect. On the Hinomarus, I had to use some pin wash to bring the lines back to life, so probably a better result would be achieved painting these features before the main color, as it was done on the Key 84. And finally, I still need to test this method with a more complex camouflage pattern. So far I use it only with basically one color surface. A multicolor or dark color or even natural metal finish should work differently, as they should have more cover than the colors I used so far. This zero cowling is one example of it. Anyway, I started to use this method mainly to get realistic effects on the rivets. Of course, the workload is bigger than the usual methods of painting and post wash. But you are not forbidden to use post-wash later if needed. In fact, the pre-wash provides a nice reference for the post-wash shade to be used. And of course, this is just my humble opinion. Each modeler should use methods and materials that suits him or her better. So, I hope you liked this video. If you do, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done yet. Your support is priceless for me. See you on the next time. Cheers!